it's still on for tonight. It's on. Just the way we plan. Should be a pretty healthy take. What sort of stuff is in this Linstead collection? Gold. Hold up the gold. Here, what was that? Someone outside. See anything? No. Come on, let's take a look round. Do you think he heard anything? I don't think so. Did you see who it was? No. I can find out if it's important. No, it's getting late. We better get back. Yeah. After I phoned you, I went back to see if I could find out anything else. They nearly caught me. What are you selling? It should be worth 50. I'll decide that. Now, look, I'm doing you a favor. I didn't have to phone you. 
No, no, wait a minute. Mannering. Luke, wait a minute. The Linstead collection. You've got a lot of stuff in that. Well, I'm still waiting. There's a job planned. They're going to clean that place out. Who's they? I don't know. I don't know that. But it's a good tip. I bargained for 50. If it's genuine, you'll get your money. When are they moving in? Tonight. The job's tonight. to waiting. You'll never get used to it. Anything, sir? Nothing. It'll be getting light soon. They won't be coming now. Looks like your tip-off was a false alarm, John. Well, I can't figure it. Cranwell had no reason to lie. Maybe they got a tip, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's no point in hanging about. Well, if you call your men off, sir, I'll report him at the station. Right, Bob. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, Harry. Bob, let me give it another half hour. The wife won't be waiting up. <laughs> no, we'll just be wasting our time. Your informer was just trying to make some easy money. Happens all the time. have just moved out. I'll give it a few more minutes. OK, Chief, we're standing by. He's got a nerve. Going right in after a tip-off. Yes, Inspector Thompson's already left. Okay, bye. What's that thing, John? It's a Luristan talisman, made about 800 BC from the Zagros region of Iran. Mm. Well, I doubt whether I can afford it on my salary.
It's all clear. I'm going in now. Right, I'll read you. Understand. Go. Can I give you a lift, John? No, I think I'll walk it, Bob. Phone's dead. I didn't expect you. was still there. I think I killed him. What? That's not the worst of it. Mannering was with him. He saw me. Saw you? That is a witness. He can nail you. Sure he can. <laughs> if he lives long enough. Hey, hey, Lonnie. Give me a cigarette. Why don't you buy some of your own? Yeah, I will, I will. I just don't want to go out yet for a while. I'm waiting for a call. You haven't seen me, understand? You haven't seen me. for Marty Cranwell. Seen him around? I'm talking to you, Lonnie. When I talk, I like people to listen. I'll say it again. I'm looking for Marty Cranwell. What do you want him for? Marty ran off at the mouth. Told the wrong things to some people. Greg's upset. I haven't seen Marty. Hasn't been around here today. Buy yourself a new racing form, Lonnie. If you see Marty, there's a lot more of these.
I reckon you're in trouble, kiddo. What's happened? It wasn't my fault. I heard the word around someone was going to knock over the Linstead collection. Who did you tell? Mannering, the Baron. He had some stuff in the exhibition. I thought he'd be worth 50 to know about it. Double Cross and Greg Wilde should be worth more than that. Well, you see, I didn't know. I didn't realize it was Greg. Here. Make your call. Then dig a big, deep hole and hide yourself in it. Antiques. The Baron. Is he back yet? No, he isn't. Is that you, Mr. Cranwell? Yes, I know it's very urgent. I'll get him to call you the moment he comes in. Yes, yes. I've got your number. Bye. Out on a flight to Barcelona. Did you get the gun? No, we searched his apartment, found nothing. Uh, look, Mannering, this may be a formality, but the law demands it. Walk along the line, and you see the man you saw on the night of the murder, put your hand on his shoulder. There's your man. You've made a mistake, Mannering. A bad mistake. The jury won't think so. I didn't mean that. It won't get to a jury. Baron. Shall I go after him now? Now you take care of the other matter first. cookie jar? <laughs> What's new? In an antique shop? <laughs> no. Had a very quiet afternoon. A couple of phone calls. One seemed fairly urgent. A man named Cranley Cranwell. Cranwell? That's it. Did he leave a number? He's on your desk. He sounded an awfully nervous little man. Who is he? He's the guy who tipped me off about that raid last night. Trying to get you all morning. Listen, they're on to me. I've got to get out. I need money. Where are you? The billiards hall in Style Street. All right, I'll be there in ten minutes. What do you want? 
little talk. Fancy a game? I've got to go, Arthur. Rack them up. Yeah, they say if you're good at pool, you've had a wasted youth. It was silly of you to go and talk to the Baron. Listen, I didn't know. I, I can explain. Very difficult. Greg arrested. He's very upset. He thinks they might use you at the trial. I won't say anything. I'll leave the country. It's Madwin you want to worry about. No. No. That matter will be dealt with. I won't say anything. I promise you, I won't. You're right. You won't. They won't get anywhere with the fingerprints. This is a pro killing. Wild wasted no time handing out the contract. Yeah, but try and prove it. Well, I suppose I may as well go through the motions and pick up the boys who work for him. You'll get nothing from them. No, <laughs> gotta try. Strange, isn't it? How a rat like Wild can inspire loyalty. More like fear. With him, you're either loyal or you're dead. This sort of murder makes me sick to my stomach. It's so easy. If you've got enough dough, you can always buy some guy to pull the trigger. Last night, Wilde pulled it himself. He can't buy his way out of that one. Hmm. Yeah, but you're our whole case, John. If one of his uh, friends should get at you, you know, I'd feel a whole lot happier if you could take a trip somewhere until the trial comes up. Well, what do I do when I get there? Hide under the stairs? Well, they'll find me if they want me badly enough, no matter where I go. Yeah, I suppose you're right. But don't worry, one thing I work at is self-preservation. Follow Mannering. I want a watch kept on him around the clock. Don't lose him. He's all the case we've got. My dear Mr. Wilde, how awfully nice to see you again. Yes. As your lawyer, I must say that I consider it outrageous that we should have to meet in these circumstances. It's quite obviously a malicious prosecution and that the police have fabricated the evidence. We'll have you out of here in no time. Now, that's the kind of enthusiasm I want to hear from a lawyer. Not enthusiasm, my dear sir, but indignation at the injustice they do you. All right, all right. What are you going to do about it? There are two problems that we have to overcome. The first of these has already been successfully dealt with. And the second? He, rather it, will be resolved no later than tomorrow night. Watching the shop. Thompson's bad. You think something might happen to me? to know who killed Cranwell. Be at the Camden Town Workers' Hall tonight. Who was it? Probably the guy who killed Cranwell. Well, what did he want? To meet. And you're going? Sure. Then I'm coming. No, Cordelia, I want you to stay here. But it might be dangerous. That's exactly why I'm going alone. You must know that it's a trap. Knowing is my advantage. Advantage? 
Oh, what's the good of talking to you? He's just left. He keeps his car around the back. Hey, wait for me. Lost him. I'm doing the best I can. Don't worry, we'll pick him up later. for a few minutes while tea is served. You're new here, aren't you? <laughs> yes. The tea is free. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, a gentleman asked me to give you this program. Well, which gentleman? The one who was there. Oh, it's gone. I see. Well, thank you anyway. All right, let's find him.
exactly Carnegie Hall. They're not exactly the New York Philharmonic. for growing wild. Dead? Mannering killed him? There's no cause for alarm, Mr. Wilde. But the hearing's tomorrow. With the Baron's testimony, I'll be committed for trial. That's unavoidable now. Ah, don't be so smug. Don't worry, Mr. Wilde. Everything's arranged. By tomorrow night, you'll be in Barcelona. <laughs> Wilder's been committed for trial. Well, that about wraps it up. Yes. The public prosecutor says we have a watertight case. Your evidence is all we need. We oppose bail. He's to be kept in custody. We'll take good care of. Huh. I'm having him taken to a top security prison. You think he might try a break? No, it's always possible. He's got a good organization, plenty of money to back it. They might just take a crack at busting him out. Anyway, that's my problem. Well, come on, I'll buy you a drink. got yourself a dangerous enemy there. I wouldn't want him as a friend. Come on, let's get that drink. Just that guy by the car over there. Know him? No, I don't think so. Come on, I'm thirsty. You think he might be interested in Wild? No, it's just coincidence, I think. Well, we'll keep an eye on him till we get to the pub. <laughs> okay. Get that drink. Gets to look less like a coincidence, doesn't it? We're just turning into Marlborough Terrace. You all set? They're ready in 
waiting. Good luck. Thanks. Ordinarily, they wouldn't try anything in the middle of London. Well, it's so unlikely that maybe that's a pretty good reason for trying it here. You said it yourself, he's got a good organization. Take the roadblock off. Start a general search of the area. Right. Have you heard anything? No, nothing that helps. That truck seems to have vanished off the face of the earth. The men who were in the ambush, haven't you been able to get any of them? All of them. If they don't know much, they were just hired help. This roadblock here. One of them knew something of the arrangements. Apparently, Wilde was going to hide out. But he didn't know where. If he had, we wouldn't be standing around I'm sorry. It's a stupid question. No, oh, well, anyway, it doesn't get us much further. He says there's a plane coming in to pick Wilde up. Now, if that's true, we haven't got much time to find him. It'll be tonight sometime. There's a chance that John might stop him. Well, he may be hurt. Badly hurt. Otherwise, I think we'd have heard from him before this.
Who's there? Anyone there? How did you find me? Well, that's not important. I'm taking you back. Not if I can help it. Well, you're on your own this time. There are no hired guns or strong arm boys. It's just you and me. Yeah. Just you, me, and that. It puts the odds slightly in your favor. What is it with you, Mannering? You've been on my back every inch of the way. What do you want, eh? Glory? Money? No. What is it, then? You wouldn't understand. Let's move out. No, wait a minute. I say, let's move. Wait a minute. I mean, at least listen to what I've got to say. I've got money. Plenty of money. You can name your own price. There's no price. Don't be ridiculous. Everybody has a price. You have a price. What is it? 20,000? 30? Just think of it. 30,000 pounds for just turning around and walking out of here. Is that the tag you put on that policeman's life? That cop? <laughs> that was an accident. Besides, I had no alternative. Listen, Mannering. In a few minutes, a plane's coming over. As soon as he sees that flare, he's gonna land and take me out of the country. You all have your money? No one will ever know. 40,000. What do you say? Get it through your head, Wild. You're finished. That cop was a friend of mine. Let's go.
One, kill me. I wouldn't have given you a second chance. Well, what are you waiting for? Shoot! Get up. We're going back. <laughs> 